Welcome back to Flashpoint. This week we are talking one-on-one -on -one with Senator Tom Tillis. Earlier we spoke with him about his battle with prostate cancer. You can see that on WCNC.com in case you missed it. But just as we finish up, he had a few other things to get off his chest. How's everything else in D.C.? Uh, you know, it's moving slow right now. I think people, I, I describe it like what I went through when I was uh, doing large projects at Price Waterhouse. Yeah. We're in the storming phase. Yeah. So the liberals think that they're going to run roughshod. The, the far right thinks that they're just going to say no to everything. And then there are those of us in the middle who hope that we'll make some progress, uh, mainly on the debt. Got a lot of work yeah. to do on the debt, worried about national security, very worried about Afghanistan. I think that it could potentially... Too quickly? Oh, I, I think it could devolve in a matter of months. Yeah. You know, the estimates are one to three years, but I think you'll see some of the provincial um, uh, outpost of the Afghani government fall uh, before Christmas. And I just worry about the mothers and the kids. These young girls been in school for the first time in their lives and the first time in decades. They're going to probably take a step back. And I also worry about our, the, the lack of intelligence gathering. We'll have what they call over the horizon intelligence gathering, but mm -hmm. the reality is uh, there's no replacement for being there, being embedded. Uh, people forget that that entire 9-11 attack was uh, launched out of an area just outside yeah. of Jalalabad because they were left alone to do what they did. Yeah. So, and the European, I, you know, I do worry about U.S. national security, but I think our European partners are probably most at risk. I, I do worry that in the last couple of years we, we've, um, I don't want to say take the, our, our eye off the ball, but I feel like as Americans, uh, I, I think you all might be doing your job and our military is doing our, their job. I feel like uh, as Americans we have shifted our focus away from that sort of mentality that we were in for a good 10 years after 9-11. Right. Um, and I feel like we've gone back to the old way of like just sort of going about our lives, not it's, thinking about yeah. that. It's even more concerning if you take a look at, uh, this doesn't get uh, news coverage, but if you just take a look at the trajectory for national uh, defense uh, uh, spending over the next few years, it's frightening. How, about how less it is, lower yeah, it is? No. It's, going to be, it's going to be successfully lower, and the reason why that's so important is you have these five-year, 10-year, 15-year major uh, weapons systems and modernization projects that are just going to keep moving to the right at the time that China is uh, compressing their time to value for new uh, systems. I mean, we've still got a, a qualitative advantage, but the quantity of what they're producing is... Well, we had a public hearing. I mean, they're, they're trying to put a naval base in the eastern, on the Atlantic shore of, uh, of Africa. Why would you do that if you didn't have your sights set on what's on the other side of that ocean? Are you optimistic about um, uh, the tone in Washington getting better at all? Yeah, yeah. For one, because it's not as bad as it seems. Uh, the reality is, on any given day on the Senate floor, you'll see people that the media want to yeah. uh, treat like they're arch rivals trying to destroy each other. They're working together every single day. Um, what has to change is the, uh, the discourse outside of Washington. I mean, if you take a look at the, the way campaigns are run, you take a look at these uh, invisible and invincible uh, personalities on the Internet, they're the root cause of the problem. Uh, and that's going to be here forever. I think that's why we have to have just a little bit more accountability because that's, that's what's producing, um, I think, the negative impression of Washington. Some members could do a better job of, sure. uh, of not stoking the flames. They end up getting all the headlines, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, but it's, uh, you know, I, I was thinking Chris Coons and I were, even during the, uh, the last of both impeachments, I was down on the floor talking with floor managers. I'm sure that if people were watching C-SPAN, they probably thought we were arguing over impeachment, yeah. but we were talking about immigration reform and intellectual property reform. Those kind of things are moving every single day. We've got a major bill for toxic exposures that's going to get out of the, uh, out of the VA. It's something I've been working on, done on a bipartisan basis, the human rights uh, coalition or, or I should say caucus that I co-chair with uh, Chris Coons doing great work just last week Senator Shaheen and I were on the call with Secretary Blinken on our 
NATO strategy and our, I'm co-chair of the Senate NATO Observer Group. All that stuff happens every single day, yeah. including a lot of pleasant conversations, asking about spouses sure. and kids. No. That's actually reassuring to hear. Because, uh, yeah, I, unfortunately, we don't always see that. Um, yeah, I mean, if that didn't happen, you'd go crazy up there. Yeah, no. And Somehow. part of it's on us as the media. <laughs> Hopefully we, we yeah. can do a better job. So maybe things are more functional in D.C. than perhaps we realize. Thanks to the senator for talking openly and frankly about his cancer diagnosis and his prognosis. More Flashpoint after this.